welcome to you brave souls who have made it here this morning uh, with our winter storm. We're glad to have you here and glad you're safe. We hope there are many of you at home who are worshiping with us uh, who are uh, taking it cautious with the condition of the rooms today. So we welcome you as well. Um, for those here, of course, you can follow along in your bulletins. For those with us online, there will be links in the description for the bulletin and the readings. So let's go ahead and get started with this fourth Sunday after the Epiphany. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be the kingdom now and forever. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, good will towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, Receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with us. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who dost govern all things in heaven and earth, mercifully hear the supplications of thy people, and in our time grant us thy peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. First reading this morning is from the book of Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to me saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I anointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, do not say, I am only a boy, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you, <clears throat> I appoint you over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. <clears throat> now let us say responsibly, or pray responsibly for Psalm 71. 
In you, O Lord, I have taken refuge. Never let me be ashamed. In your righteousness deliver me and set me free. Incline your ears to me and save me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. You are my crag and my house, my stronghold. Deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the clutches of the evildoer and the oppressor. For you are my hope, O Lord God, my confidence since I was young. I have been sustained by you ever since I was born. From my mother's womb you have been my strength. My praise shall always be with you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be, world without end. Amen. Second reading this morning is from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but I do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if my hand over <clears throat> and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but I do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy prophecy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to my childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part. Then I will know full, fully even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three. And the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory be to the Lord. Jesus began to speak in the synagogue at Nazareth. Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that had come from his mouth. They said, Is this not Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, Do hear also in your hometown the things that we have heard you did at Capernaum. And he said, Truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, and there was a severe famine over all the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them, except to a widow at Zarephath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, 
all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so that they might hurl him off the cliff. And he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. The television show Ted Lasso really begins with another character, Rebecca Walton. Rebecca is recently divorced from a very rich husband. And for, fortunately for her, she has done a good enough job on the legal side of things that she has gotten a lot of his assets. And one of these things that she obtains from her ex-husband is a British football club, AFC Richmond. Now, this divorce happens because her husband is a philanderer. He has had multiple affairs behind her back. He has not done a good job of keeping his wedding vows. And as she's dealing with her anger, her rightful anger at what he's done, she decides to try and destroy the one thing that her ex-husband has ever loved. And that is the football club, AFC Richmond. And she goes about this in a really interesting way. And this is where we get to Ted Lasso, who is an American football coach all the way in Kansas City. And he has led a college football team all the way from being not so great to doing really, really well in their season. And so Ted Lasso is called by Rebecca to come come and manage the AFC Richmond team. He's called to be a coach for a team in a sport he knows very little about, to go to a new country when he's never stepped foot outside of the United States, and I don't believe he's ever lived anywhere but Kansas. And Rebecca's hope in all of this is Ted's lack of experience will be what's needed to take Richmond, which has remained a Premier League team despite not performing so well, so that they will now be finished as a Premier team and destroyed in their reputation and just their ability to play football to begin with. Now, Ted works in a different way than most coaches do. He doesn't particularly care about the wins or losses. In his own words, he tries to help the players be the best versions of themselves both on and off the field. And in spite of a rough season, as one would expect from a coach who doesn't know anything about the game, Ted has an immensely positive effect on AFC Richmond. And he starts to have a positive effect on Rebecca as well. In fact, there comes a point where Rebecca admits I lost my way for a minute, but I'm on the road back. 
even though she brought Ted to bring about the destruction of the Richmond team. He brought something else. He brought healing to the team. And he brought healing to Rebecca as well. It was a completely unexpected gift of love and grace. God does the same thing for us. Though we expect God to work in one way and not in another, God often surprises us with what God is doing in the world. We see this. We see what God is working throughout our readings today. We see that first in Jeremiah. Because as God is commissioning Jeremiah, he tells him, he tells Jeremiah, that the power that he's giving through his words, through the words that Jeremiah will speak on God's behalf, that these words will have the power to pluck down and pull down, uh, to pluck up and pull down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. We often get, get fixated on the first set of words there. That idea of destruction, of pulling down, of overthrowing. That's what we focus on, the destruction, the ending. And yet God, when he does this, when there is this destruction, when there is this endings that are coming, God uses that to create beginnings, to build something new. Think of Jesus' own work in this world. When Jesus was tearing down an old way of thinking, of religious thinking. He was at the same time building something back up for people to follow and believe in again. And Jesus also didn't let sin come in and destroy us. But instead, Jesus used even death itself to help us rebuild, to build us back up from sin, to give us a resurrection of new life and grace. The same way, Rebecca wanted to tear down Richmond, but instead Ted was able to use his own abilities even though he didn't know the game of football, and use it to build something up that was better and new and wonderful. We might also think that Ted should have just stayed home in America and focused on coaching the football, American football, that he knew and loved. Jesus speaks of something similar in the gospel today, of this unexpected transition to a group that we may not have expected to need help, that we may not have expected to go and help. He speaks of the prophet Elijah, who could have helped heal those who were hungry in the famine in his own way. But instead, he went to a Gentile, widow, and orphan. He went to them to provide help. We see the same with Elisha, Elijah's successor. He could have healed anyone within the kingdom of Israel, but instead he too healed a Gentile, the people we would at least expect to receive healing from God. And that's oftentimes how God works. God works to help the people and through the people that we least expect. Now, when Rebecca in Ted Lasso realizes that she had been going on the wrong path, Ted is there to forgive her. Even though she tried to sabotage his efforts to build up 
this new and great and wonderful thing he was working in the Richmond team all throughout the season. And in that moment of forgiveness, Ted tells her, I think that if you care about someone, and you've got a little love in your heart, there ain't nothing you can't get through together. That's essentially what Paul is telling us this morning. After Paul's stretch these past several weeks of telling us about the various gifts of the Spirit, Paul now says to the Corinthians, and us as well, that even if we have what we might think are the best gifts possible, those gifts mean nothing without love. And that love of which Paul speaks is the same love we talk about every Sunday at the beginning of our service. The love we hear about in the two great commandments. To love God with all of our being and to love our neighbors as ourselves. God works in ways and through people that we least expect. We often don't see that when things are being brought down, that really, as that ending is coming our way, God is working to build something back up, to make something new, to see what it is that God is doing, to see who and how it is that God is working through, we need to have that love that Paul speaks about in our hearts. We need to be able to love both God and our neighbor. We need to have the same love that Ted had, the kind of love that can forgive someone, even when they're acting as our enemy. We need the kind of love that can recognize that the Rebecca's of this world aren't acting out of a sense of pure evil, instead out of a sense of brokenness. And brokenness is what we all experience through sin. And it's the very thing that God is coming into this world to destroy in order to help build us back up. So, whoever we are, wherever we may find ourselves, wherever we may be, God is working in us so that we can have that same love. That love that Paul speaks of. That love in our hearts that bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Because if we can be open to letting God in, if we can have that love in ourselves, then not only can we further do that God work that God has given us to do, not only can we see the work God is working in unexpected ways, to see that work that God is doing to build something new out of things that are being torn down. But if we have that love, we will have something that is truly worth possessing. now let us affirm our faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe
believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, the very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory, to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe in one holy and Catholic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Kneeling, let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church in the world. Almighty and ever living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men. Receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Daniel, our bishop, Trey, our priest, as well as Francis, bishop of Rome, Bartholomew, archbishop of Constantinople, and all other denominational leaders, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence we may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joe, our president, Tom, our governor, John, our mayor, and all our local elected officials that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O oh Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy heavenly, to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O oh Lord, to comfort and succor those for whom we pray and all those people who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We give thanks and pray for those celebrating birthdays this week. Jake Lesser, Elise Palanquin, John Corderette, Dolores Yalek, and Lauren Hutchinson. We pray for the children, teens, and college students of this parish, and for those serving in the military. We pray for the life and witness of our companion parish, St. Mark AME Zion Church, Newtown, and St. Paul's Levittown. Lord, look graciously on thy church, and so guide the minds of those who shall choose a rector for this parish, that we may receive a faithful pastor who will care for thy people and equip us for our ministries. We offer, we offer up any other prayers at this time, whether allowed, in our heart. We pray for all who may be driving today, keep them safe, keep everyone warm at this time as well. We also
also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed in this life in thy faith and fear, especially departed loved ones and Christian martyrs throughout the world. Beseech thee me to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good example of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Joseph, our most holy spouse, Luke, our patron, and all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of the heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Now taking a moment of silence for reflection, let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our merciful sins and wickedness which we, from time to time, most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty, for provoking thus just to thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent, and our hearts are sorry for these our misdemeanors. In the remembrance that has grievous unto us, the burden of death is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, and have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever and hereafter serve and be pleased in the of this life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now please stand as you are able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. And with thy spirit. Please show one another a sign. You may be seated again. Well, welcome to you all this morning. Uh, again, we're glad for those who are able to make it, and we hope those who um, are not um, are uh, staying safe and warm at home. Um, again, reminder, thank you all for um, masking at this time. And I do believe we have masks in the back if you need them. Also, don't forget to sign in for our service as well if you have not done so already. Because uh, as we've already seen, that's an important factor if we need to uh, do some contact tracing. So please uh, leave your name and a way to contact you um, if we need that. Uh, if you look in your bulletin, you'll see some of the announcements. Um, an important one is next week, um, because we're doing our parish reports um, as part of our annual meeting, um, we're going to be combining our services next week. So um, we'll just have one service that'll start at 9 a.m. Uh, so please note that, and please note we'll have a baptism next week too, so that'll be a fun thing for us to celebrate together. Uh, that's the main thing for next week, so again, just remember that, um, that we uh, will be meeting at 9 a.m. for next Sunday. Uh, you can find all the other things for all the other announcements, um, and you can find fun things like our Faith Fact, which actually talks about a reading from Jeremiah today, how the word we say is boy could also be servant. Um, so... There's a question of, is Jeremiah referring to, um, is Jeremiah referring to a uh, servant who is a uh, young person or someone who is a second career person going into being a prophet? So either way, um, we've got our folks covered. And now I believe we've got an announcement about the uh, search process. Would have been good if I remembered that. 
grateful to the search committee um, and to Bud, our uh, consultant who's been helping us navigate um, all these things so that we can uh, choose the best person, uh, whether me, since I've got my hat in the running, or somebody else, uh, so that we can choose the best person for St. Louis. Right. And now um, we'll continue our service, uh, moving into Holy Eucharist. Um, please um, note that uh, while we don't have our offering plate coming up, we do have it in the back. So if you do have an offering you wish to give, you can place it there after the service. And those with us online, you can always mail in your check as well. And now, Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God. Our service now continues with Eucharistic Prayer A. Please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, thou hast caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of thy glory in the face of thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, 
Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord of the sky. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Holy and gracious Father, in thine infinite love, thou didst make us for thyself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, thou didst mercifully send Jesus Christ, thine only begotten and eternal Son, to share our humanity, to live and die as one of us, and to reconcile us unto thee, who art the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross, and there made an offering of himself in obedience to thy will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night in which he was betrayed into suffering and death, our Lord Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks unto thee, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, and the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his blessed death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We offer unto thee these gifts. Sanctify them, we beseech thee, by thy Holy Spirit, that they may be for thy people the body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, the holy food and drink of you and unending life and him. Do thou likewise sanctify us, thy servants, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve thee in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Joseph, St. Luke, and all thy saints into the joy of thine eternal kingdom. All this we ask through thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ our Passover once for all is sacrificed for us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takes away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same, Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls wash through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and in us. Amen. 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 
gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Our service now continues with the post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food and the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thine everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord shine the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. And now let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thank you, God. I will see you all in the back, and um, as I turn off our uh, live recording, we will hopefully see all of you again with us online or in person soon. Thank you all.